Hi guys, Andy Buck from the ATM course here. This is just a quick video. I've had a few requests of people asking me, how do you secure a chest tube to the patient once you've got it in and decompress their pneumothorax or hemothorax in the trauma case? So here we go, it's a quick video to show you how to secure a chest tube to your patient. Got your tube in the patient, it's up to the right depth, all the holes are in the patient, you've connected the end up to your drain, you know it's swinging and bubbling. The first thing you're gonna need is some sort of thick suture material. I'm just using a 2.0 silk on a relatively large curved needle. For some reason, some places I've worked out have straight needles. I think it makes it hard with a straight needle. Curved needles are better. There's this argument about silk versus uh, nylon sutures. Silk grips the tube better and is much easier to tie, especially when your hands are all slippery and bloody in a trauma. But the braid in silk theoretically makes it more likely for bacteria to crawl into the wound. Nylon sutures are slippery around the tube. They're harder to tie, but have a lower infection rate. So, you start with, the, you've had made a decent sized hole for your tube there, you've got a three or four centimetre hole and what you want to do is put a stitch either side of that. So we'll start at the top and you pull it through until both ends are roughly equal length. It doesn't have to be exact, just rough. If you think you're not going to accidentally pull the stitch out, now's not a bad time to actually cut the needle off so you don't stab yourself with it. What you can then do, it's up to you, if you're good with your surgical knots, you can uh, tie a surgical knot, or if you're not, just do your standard ED thing. If you're not confident with that, grab your needle holders and just do a normal stitch. Bring it down and tie it close to the skin. You're stitching the skin back together here. You don't want it to be super tight, but you don't want it to be loose either. So you've done one stitch. Now what you want to do is bring that around the tube. In the old days we used to teach people this Roman sandal technique where you'd come out along the tube like this and you'd make these lovely pattern ties around. It looks great, doesn't it? Roman sandal. The problem with that is, is it allows the tube to move too much. It can move in and out and when it does you're going to draw bacteria into the wound in the chest and increase your risk of an empyema. So what we're trying to get people to do nowadays is actually just go round and round the tube close to the skin. It doesn't have to be super tight but relatively tight, relatively close to the skin. Leave yourself some room to tie some knots and try and slide it right down so you're relatively close to the skin. So there you go, you can see you've got one tie very close to the skin and your skin's uh, nice and tight around it. Then what you want to do is go to the other side of the wound. So you grab your other stitch material out. Just go to the other side. I forgot to say, sorry, that's the head of the patient. You can see his face up here, there, that's his feet. This chest tube's in the right side of the chest. You then go through the other side, same length ends. You can then, like I said, cut the needle off if you like, or if you find it easier to tie your stitches with that. So you can see then that I'm making the wound fairly snug around the tube there. It looks a little bit artificial because it's um, uh, this rubber material the chest is made out of. So then you've got another stitch there. So you can see the wound is now nicely opposed on both sides of the tube. It's raised up a little bit, like I said, it's artificial because it's this rubber material. Actual skin uh, will s smooth around the tube much more nicely. And then, like I said, don't Roman sandal it. You want to go round and round, fairly close to the skin. It doesn't have to be totally flush, but fairly close to the skin. Leave yourself enough room to do some ties. Make sure it's slid right down fairly close to the skin. So you can see there you're not coming out along the tube. There, nice short ends. There's very little room for it to move in and out. You can see that tube, the skin will move, but the tube itself isn't coming in and out of the skin. You then cut your ends off. What you then need is a couple of tegaderms. I just use these, the large tegaderms. These are 10 by 12 centimetres 
Again, not fussed about brands. These are good because of this cardboard edge they have around and you'll see why in a moment. So what you do is you take a couple of these out of their packets and what you want to do is fold them in on themselves. So with the backing facing out, fold it in half and just make a bit of a crease. Grab your other one, do the same. I often prepare these in advance before I start putting my tube in. So they're sitting there out of their packets, already folded in half. What you then do is you're going to put one either side of your tube laterally along the chest wall and make what they call a sandwich dressing. And when you're doing this, it's important because they're very sticky, as soon as you take this backing off, you want to get it right up against the edge of the tube before you stick it down and right down against the skin before you wrap it up against the tube. Same on the other side. You'll see once the sticky stuff comes off, you try and fold your tube out of the way, get it right into that crevasse there, stick it down on the chest and then fold it up. So we'll just have a quick go at doing that. You can see once it's, because you've folded it, there's a little bit of extra shape to it. it makes it easier to get this edge right in there. So what you want to do is fold your tube away a bit. I wonder if I'll do the other one first, might be easier to see what I'm talking about. You want to get the edge of it right up against the tube, down on the patient's chest, push down and then bring your tube back up, stick it up along the tube. You can even probably push that down a little bit further on the skin. The risk is when you stick it to the tube too high, it'll pull off the skin or it'll pull away from the skin. Then you grab your other one, peel the backing off, have it like this, you fold the tube away and you go right in. I'm heading for that crease right down there and I want these ends of the tube of the dressing to touch right down there. I push it down on the skin first and then I just fold it back up like that and into a sandwich. You can see then the tubes enclosed in the dressing. You then just peel the backing off. A little bit fidgety, but it comes off fairly easily. But there you go, you've then got a sandwich dressing. Some hospitals will actually get you to cut a square of what they call melalin or gauze. And if you have some dressing material like that, before you put your uh, sandwich dressing on, what you can do is actually get a five centimetre pad of some sort, some sort of absorbent pad, cut into the middle, cut a bit of a gap out, and actually slot that in around your tube before you put your sandwich dressing on. So just a bit of extra padding there and it stops anything coming in and out. I just didn't do it for the purpose of the demonstration because I think it's good to be able to see the tube coming in and out. You don't have to put any gauze or dressing in there. Um, if it's too big, you can see it'll stick out the edges and actually lift your dressing off. So it can be a bit fidgety, uh, but some people recommend doing that because that'll sit nicely around your tube and uh, absorb any small amount of the blood that comes out. Lastly, so you can see there actually, so that's the tube nicely in place. The last thing we want to do then is secure the tube to the patient. And for that, we're going to use my favorite thing in the world, sleek. You can see our skeleton model here is covered in sleek. This is a seven and a half centimeter roll. It's quite sticky tape. You can use one of these or sometimes two will actually fit on a large patient. And you want to build like a little mesent tree or a little bridge with your sleek. And you're going to attach that to the patient's skin on the side of their chest. So you grab a piece that's maybe oh, 20 centimetres long, rip it off. Don't stick it to your dressing because you want that separate, but just a little bit down, an inch or two down from that, you wrap your sleek around the tube and join it up underneath. So it's raised on a little bridge and then you stick that down onto the patient's chest just a bit of extra security so if anything pulls as you can see if anything pulls on the tube it doesn't want to move at all it's well secured with your sleek on the mesentry dressing there on a mesentry it's also well secured at the top here I'll just zoom in on the mesentry there so you can see it so it's well secured with the tape bridge 
And if I pull on that, it doesn't really want to come any, go anywhere. And you can see there as well, it's not, the tube's not kinked, but it's got a nice sterile dressing around it. No bugs can get in. And if you've got your padding underneath, that'll absorb any blood. Okay, so there you have it. That was a quick video on how to secure your chest tube to your patient with some sutures, uh, see-through tegaderm dressing. Don't forget, you can add that little square of gauze or melanin or some sort of absorbent pad. It can only be three or four, maybe five centimetres uh, diameter to fit around the tube and under your dressing. Don't forget to cut a little snip into it if you want some absorbent material under there. And then don't forget that mesentery bridge of sleek tape to secure it to the side of your patient's chest. That way when the patient's getting transferred on and off the ED trolley, around to CT, up to ICU, onto the table in theatre, the tube won't come out. Don't do the old fashioned uh, Roman sandal ties anymore because what they found is those allow the tubes to slide in and out of the chest wall and when they do they can push bacteria into the chest and cause an empyema. There are increased rates of empyema associated with that securing technique. So wrap your sutures around nice and close to the skin, round and round and round and don't forget to create a nice seal with your sutures when you stitch the skin closed. It doesn't have to be super tight, you don't want the skin blanching going white, you just want to stitch it nicely shut so it's a nice sealed wound around the tube. So there you have it, that's chest tube securing. Hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or get on our blog and leave me a comment there. You can contact me through the website. If you found this useful, please come along and check out the ETM course. You can see all the details on the etmcourse.com website and we look forward to seeing you there.